Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Roshni, and this is Betty Grew Up. So, Betty Grew Up is usually a channel dedicated to self care, self worth, and personal growth related content, but today I wanted to talk about anti racism and everything that's going on right now. While there have been many examples of Black and Desi solidarity over time, there is also a lot of anti blackness within the Desi community, and I wanted to create this playlist so that we can start this discussion and and start to learn together and really start facing these topics that are extremely important for us to address. So with this first video, we are going to start with the model minority myth. The model minority is a concept in which a particular minority demographic who have achieved greater socioeconomic status are used as a reference point to justify the lack of need of government assistance programs to other minority groups. So in the U.S., this concept has been used to compare Asian Americans to Black and Latinx Americans, often used to imply that the, quote, non-model groups are the ones at fault for achieving, quote, less than the model minority. So the first thing that I want to point out is that a lot of this started after World War II. During and after World War II, the media really emphasized that the Japanese were rising up and moving on after in internment camps. Essentially, the media was saying, well, Asians can do this, so why can't black people? In my research, I actually came across a really interesting theory, and if you want to check it out, I'll link the sources down below, but it essentially said that during the civil rights movement, black Americans were obviously very vocal about achieving equal rights. So the theory is essentially that because Asian Americans were less vocal about equal rights and about racism, they were seen as less of a threat to white America, even though they weren't doing that much better socioeconomically than black Americans. Americans at the time. The model minority myth essentially implies that all Asian Americans are living the American dream and that we're, you know, coming here with nothing and we're becoming doctors and lawyers and all these things. But there was actually a study showing that Cambodians, Laotians, and Hmong have a college degree attainment of under 9.2%, while Filipinos, Chinese, Japanese, and Korean Americans have a college degree attainment of over 40%, and Indian Americans have a college degree attainment of over 64.4%. So to say that we are all in the same group and that we're all doing it right and that we have one Asian culture with one set of Asian values is just incorrect and it's kind of grossly pushing out of proportion how well a lot of Asian Americans are actually doing. So it minimizes the struggles, it overemphasizes how well Asian Americans are actually doing, and then it completely takes out of account structural racism, structural oppression, and all these other things that are systematically working to keep black Americans down. I was actually listening to a talk between Dr. Ibram X. Kendi and he was being interviewed by Jamel Hill and I will link that in the description and literally everything that Dr. Kendi said is gold but he was talking about this idea of like well if you just pull your pants up you'll be treated better and that kind of idea being thrown towards black Americans and so what he talked about was that it was actually white abolitionists that had told the black community this information. Over time that became something that black Americans passed down to their future generation and what Dr. Kendi talks about is how frustrating that is because that actually makes black Americans partially responsible for the racism that they're facing. And he brings up a great point in which he says that, you know, when you are um, extremely educated and you are a scholar and you're, you know, defying the odds and becoming, you know, this great black American, he's like, well, then they just tell you that you're extraordinary, right? They tell you that you're articulate and that you are extra special and there's something different about you. It doesn't change the perception of that community. They're just looking at this individual as different. When you think that way, you're still kind of dancing around this topic of racism. You're still admitting that racism exists, right? You're not pointing out that the problem is that people are racist. You're just saying, oh, if you mold yourself and tweak yourself and change yourself, then maybe racism won't happen to you. These are the kinds of ideas that perpetuate the model minority myth. They make you feel like if you work hard enough and achieve great things that you can earn the same status that whiteness can provide you. But no matter how hard you work, that seat and that status won't be provided to you because of what is inherently different about who you are. And so I wanted to run over a list of just a few things that have been achieved in just the last couple of weeks because we finally decided to stand together. In uh, New York City, part of the uh, NYPD's $6 billion budget is allocated to youth and social services. Mayor Bill de Blasio 
Ocasio committed to repealing Section 50A, which prevents the public from accessing officers' disciplinary records. Um, NYC lawmakers also banned chokeholds. There's a database by a lawyer and a mathematician that was launched to document the pattern of police brutality across the country at protests, and over 500 cases have been reported. I will link this um, spreadsheet down below as well. The Confederate statues have also been coming down across the country. They've already come down in Virginia, Alabama, and a slave owner statue from the UK has also actually been removed. There have been discussions about disbanding the police department in Minneapolis. We're proving to ourselves over the last few weeks that when we do stand together, when we do come together, it is possible to make a difference. So I hope that you enjoyed this video about the model minority myth. In the next video, I will be talking about what racism actually looks like in the Indian community and what we can start to do about it. If you enjoyed this content, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you know of any other black creators, black leaders, black entrepreneurs that you want to highlight, please do leave them in the comments. And if there's any other topics you want me to cover in this playlist, just let me know in the comments below as well. I love you all. Happy healing.